and welcome to Marketing Showcase On Demand. And thank you for checking in to Andy Sherratt's presentation when he spoke about delivering successful branding as part of December's live online marketing event. It's a brilliant session. It lasts about 30 minutes long and I hope you enjoy it. Um, but yeah, welcome. Thanks for, thanks for joining today. I'm just going to um, just try to sort something there on my screen so I can just keep an eye out if anybody uh, does pop anything on the screen. Yeah, um, actually, I'm going to take the silly hat off. It's getting a bit warm inside my chimney. Um, yeah, welcome to my talk on delivering successful branding. It's God, I've really condensed this. Um, we, as you say, Andy Sherry, I work for or I run Spa Professional Academy, a chartered institute of marketing accredited study centre. So this is just a little excerpt from one of the qualification modules that CIM have, with that module being managing brands. Um, but I'll mention that a little bit later when I talk to you about the offer that we've got um, for you as a visitor watcher today. So um, yeah, in terms of this, well, right, I want to kind of riff, quickly talk through what a brand is, how you can determine how successful your brand is at the moment and some key pointers to delivering a more successful brand, developing that brand to make it more successful for the future. So I'm going to start off, though, with a definition from many people in marketing will recognize the name Philip Kotler, the guru of marketing. Um, you can tell I'm not. I'm just slightly over 21 now. When I did my marketing degree, Philip Kotler was the person whose book was the one to to buy. And I, to be fair, you know, of all of the books you can still get, you still can. Just I bought the first edition, and I think he's on about the 20th now. But Philip Kotler defines a brand as, as you can see, I'm not going to read it to you. Name term um, or a combination of things to identify the goods or services. But actually, I'm going to tell you that Cutler there is only partly right. Because I think the one big thing this definition of brand misses out on, it very much focuses on the external symbolism of the brand. And a brand is internal much more than it is external. It's very much about the way the organization operates and that comes down to the people within it. And I think this definition of the brand, great as it is for the visual element, is very lacking on the internal bit. But that final point, it differentiates an organization from its competitors. Yes, that's what a brand does, but it's much more than that name, the sign, the symbol, the design, et cetera. They're really important to think of that. But I also just wanted to kind of quickly say, well, what, what is a great brand? So just some examples in terms of it. Now, there's all sorts of things we can always look at in terms of, you know, a brand, what is a great one or, or whatever. Um, so uh, some examples. I think mean, Innocent is a great brand. If we look at the way they operate from when the three guys started it to being a subdivision of the Coca-Cola, company these days, um, even though you would not necessarily easy, easily see it. Yeah, the, the logo, but the way they operate, if anybody, probably a lot of marketers do follow Innocent on social media, they live that brand. The whole essence of the brand is, is what they actually do. One that I've put on here, because it's so enduring, one of the, the longest established brands that there is, uh, but Guinness, it's so clear. Well, it's absolutely anything but clear, I suppose, is Guinness, isn't it? But, you know, it's a, a really recognisable brand or product and product behind it as well. So Guinness is a great one. But branding doesn't just apply to consumer side of things. We're all really familiar with JCB. The, yeah, sure, the image, the, the yellow um, machinery and things. But JCB is a really globally recognized brand um, that are very well respected in their sector, their industry. And the brand applies. And they are an example of an organization where you can buy JCB branded items that are nothing to do with 
earth moving or whatever else we categorize JCB as. And then just another one that's um, also, you know, the logo is not tremendous or anything, but they're a great brand in terms of everything they live, of, of IKEA, of, of quality at affordable prices, appealing to mega amounts of population. That's just a few examples of, of organizations that are, or brands that I think are great. I could talk for ages about that as well. Um, if anybody wants to use the chat and bung in their favorite brand, um, just be interesting to see. But um, um, so while you do that, I will just carry on a little bit in terms of it now. But because I want to talk about um, what is brand identity. Now, I've just criticized Kotler for, for talking about that, but we do need to understand the identity of a brand that, that we've got. So first off, what, what is it? It's individuality. If we want to understand the identity of a brand. We do need to understand what actually makes that brand different because if a brand is just the same as something else, it's not really a brand. So what's the thing that makes it individual? That's a key part of identity. So for your own organization, um, think about, you know, what's the individuality? And I've just seen somebody, somebody's put on their Riverford Farms favorite brand. Yeah, very great quality organic produce is my thought on that. I might be wrong in terms of that one. Oh, sure, we've got a German car fan. Um, yeah, there's an interesting one, thanks. But yeah, individual, Porsche, very, very individual, very much so with the classic 911 that they stick the engine in the wrong end. Um, very individual, but definitely in terms of that. What are the long-term goals and ambitions that that brand has? There's a really important one to, to understand for it. Um, you know, th those, what is that brand aiming to get to in the long term? So again, think about that for your own organization. Where, where is it aiming to be with the brand? That can be separate, of course, to total corporate um, aims. But what are the aims for the brand? Uh, yeah, somebody had to say Apple as a favorite brand, didn't they? I think there's, there's a, a fascinating brand, actually, in many ways, is Apple. Um, absolutely because of that consistency you know what is the consistency of a brand and an apple is um an incredibly consistent brand yes they have changed you know and i'll pick that a little bit the logo but great consistency over years of what they do um high technology um using it in a slightly different way very good quality superb design and, and that's design of operation and things and and i say that i'm not an apple fan but as a marketer i have a lot of respect for apple i don't have an apple product um but they their consistency in everything they do and the integration across things is um is always fantastic yeah and, and you know if we if we take things like compare the market and, and so on um we're bent to get them somebody thinking of jingles and things glossier i don't know glossier um, that's one that's passed me by. Maybe I'm not in the target audience for it. And um, what are the values of the brand? What does that brand stand for? And that becomes a really important area to consider <clears throat> the value that the brand brings. Um, and the basic truths. Now, there's an interesting um, statement. What, what is it that we understand as fundamental about those um Oh, there we go. Yes, if, uh, if Glossier is for millennials and generations, that I'm definitely not involved in it, am I? Um, the basic truths of a brand, you know, what, what does it stand for? What do people absolutely associate that, that brand with? That if we talk to, to nearly anybody, what would they, they think it would be? To go back to the IKEA one, most people would probably think the basic truth of, of IKEA is a place to get lost because you can never find your way through the maze. Um, but, uh, you know, it's those sort of elements for it. But obviously also, and this is, this is the bit where logos and visual identities do come in quite a lot, is what are the recognition signs of that brand? So these are some questions that are really helpful to use to understand the current situation of the brand um, that you are operating within. 
um, and your organization's brand because every organization has a brand um, you know, and it doesn't matter if it's a single person doing a bit of bookkeeping using their own name they are a brand um, and, and massively important on that and uh, there's an interesting brand from Nathan there in terms of Unilever a, a day without using any of their products yes but can anybody name which Unilever products they actually use you're absolutely right but as a corporate brand, it's one that doesn't get used massively ever at a product level. And as a marketer, I'm slightly embarrassed to, to admit that I understand what Unilever is and what they do, but actually their brand policy is that it very much is that umbrella brand that, and, and the corporate brand that isn't applied particularly to the products they they look at take answering brand identity at a product type level rather than the corporate brand um, level but it, uh, use these questions to think about you know actually are we lacking individuality are the values clear do people understand the basic truths use those to understand where we are in terms of a brand um, but i do want to look at this linkage between identity and image and actually the way to think of that is that we need to look at it from the organization side and the, from the organization side it's the is the identity organizations create and, and determine that identity but what really counts for a brand of course is what happens with the customer and, and the way the customer sees it. And the image is from the customer perspective. So an organization creates an identity, the customer sees an image. And one of the big issues that we often have in terms of brand is that sometimes somebody builds a big wall between those two things. And the people that build the big wall between those two things is the organization. Because the organization tried to create a brand identity that gives a very, very different image to the customer. So actually, you know, having put the wall in there, as marketers, the really important thing is to make sure that that wall, probably best way to, to describe it, is that it's mirrored. Because what you want is that the customer's image of the organisation to be exactly what the organization wants its identity to be. But at the end of the day, the image is only what the customer thinks it is. And it doesn't matter what we do in terms of identity, it does all come down to the image that the customer has. So what creates that identity? What are we looking at in terms of it? Yes, obviously massively important, the communication and the visual identity is a key element that organizations do but massively important to recognize the behavior we have to behave in the right way in relation to it and the overall corporate culture yes we can have separate brands in the organization but the total corporate culture is an important one to consider in terms of that and the other element that impacts on the brand identity is in the broadest possible sense of the words, um, the market conditions. So what's happening with competitors, what's happening out, you know, in terms of all of these areas, what is the situation there to that is the, the environment the organization is operating in will impact on that identity that the organization has. And, and I've got to say it at this, at this stage, you know, the, the way brands identities have changed this year because of the whole situation we've been living in um, since March that many organizations can now have different identities people see them in very different ways you know and, and it's difficult to say this when we're in a zoom meeting but you know this uh, oh god not zoom again um, sort of thing scenario that's changed their brand identity somewhat because we've, we've been a little bit zoomed out maybe in terms of it Thanks very much for joining in and seeing again today um, in terms of that. So let's have a, a quick look through some points to really analyze the current brand. 
where do we look at? We need to look at it from the customer side. So what's happening in terms of customers? What are their motivations? What are the unmet needs that customers have that our brand maybe should be supplying? And obviously, uh, marketing mantra, segmentation is important. We've got to understand our customers. We also have to understand our competitors. What are they doing in terms of their brand? So what is the competitor's brand image and identity? What are they trying to do? What are their customers seeing? What are the strengths of competitor brands? What strategies are they using? But also massively important to understand what's vulnerable, what are their vulnerabilities in terms of the competitor's brand and where are they positioning themselves um, as a brand? So we've got to understand competitors, but we've got to understand ourselves. So we need to understand what is that existing brand image that relates to our customers, of course, in terms of it. What's the brand heritage that we've got? Where does our brand come from in terms of heritage? What can we talk about in terms of it? Strengths and strategies, again, you know, same as for the competitors. What are our brand, brand strengths? What are the, the strategies that we're using for the brand? And maybe we haven't got any, in which case we need to solve that. And the values, the organizational values, what is really important to the organization? And part of the, the thing for each of the four brands that I talked about um, as being strong brands is the values of the organization behind them are really, really important um, to, to think of. And particularly in terms of competitor analysis, something like I'm a marketer, a marketing tutor, and I realized ages ago that actually if you're teaching marketing, it's compulsory. So I've kind of done this. I've mentioned Philip Kotler and I've got a matrix in. So you've got I've got tick the boxes for doing a, a marketing talk from a, a, a tutor perspective in terms of this. Um, but a brand performance matrix, understanding the strength of brand capability versus the strategic influence of the brand and comparing our brand with our main competitors on this basis. And if we can use this and get this right, then we can end up in a really strong situation to know where to move to um, in future. So I've picked a couple of areas that we really need to think about in terms of a brand and what we need to do to, to develop the brand and understand the brand. And one of those obviously is brand awareness. And so what constitutes brand awareness? And there's two elements to it. One is brand recognition. Now, what, what, how well recognized is our brand in terms of logos, symbols, and so on, but how much brand we call, how many people actually remember it? You might recognize it, but do you actually remember it as existing? So those two elements come from the levels of brand familiarity. You know, the, the brands that people have mentioned and that I put on there, we're all quite familiar with those brands. I would imagine I'd be surprised if somebody wasn't. Um, you know, so what level of brand familiarity is there in terms of what we do? What about the brand knowledge? So in terms of that, you know, it, it, so familiarity is awareness, if you like, but the brand knowledge is about sort of strong, it, it, how strong is that knowledge? Is it favorable? Is it unique? What kind of brand associations are there with it? You know, is it because known for being a high quality brand in terms of it? Or is it, you know, a, a, um, a little or an Aldi, which is, a low price brand, you know, that's the knowledge that we've got. It doesn't matter where we are in terms of it. But how well is the brand performing? Is it a market, you know, in terms of market share? Is it a leader? Is it a dominant brand? Is it very much a quiet brand for it? And we've got, if we understand those, we can then start developing that level of awareness, developing the brand knowledge, developing the performance of the brand. But also, of course, um, we need to think about the brand image for it. So what are the, the brand image? And brand image comes from, from two areas, really. So coming back to you know, the, the way customers perceive the identity that we as an organization are trying to, to deliver. So the brand associations from that 
And also that brand image comes through the favorability, the strength, and the uniqueness of any of those associations that there are with the brand. And those are the bits that, that have that image. Around. There's no doubt brands that we think don't have a good image, the brands we have that, that we have a, a, a good image of that we think are great and positive. And the, the ones that people um a, uh, people have, have mentioned in terms of that. Um, the, the brands that people have picked out and ones that almost certainly, you know, we look upon favorably and they're strong and have uniqueness um, to us. So these things come from the attributes and the benefits and kind of a bit of an overall evaluation for it. So attributes, attributes can be product related or not product related. And the benefits can be functional ones that actually and I, and I might be wrong in terms of this, you know, the, the, but the personal, the washing whiter sort of thing, a functional benefit, a symbolic benefit could be something there that I'm going to pick the Porsche and BMW ones there, you know, symbolic. I'm successful. I've got a, a Porsche sort of thing. And yeah, we do buy things on that basis. Um, marketers more than anybody else. Did you know that? Uh, just the, the profession that is more likely to buy branded products than any other profession actually is marketers we ought to know better because we know that you know brands aren't always necessarily quite what they're conveyed to be but apparently marketers are more susceptible to buy branded products than anybody else um, so yeah functional symbolic experimental benefits um, that impact on that that brand image um, that's a, a interesting question there I'll, I'll have to think about one from uh, in terms of good technique for assessing brand awareness I mean ultimately yes surveys have to be the the thing for that um, I'll come back at, at the end and, and pick up on a few bits in terms of that but um, so yeah brand building how do we build a brand well the product or service or whatever is so integral to the brand you know it's got to be right Think about extensions, the JCB stuff that you can buy JCB branded clothing. How can we, can we, what are the extensions that go along with the brand that we've got? Price is important. It doesn't mean cheap. It doesn't mean expensive. It means the right price for the brand that we're trying to build. And obviously very much is about communications. You know, I might have criticized Kotler's um, definition, but communications is massively important in how we communicate the brand which I'll talk about in, in, in just a moment. But I just wanted to give an example here. In terms of building brands, I'm, I'm a petrol head. So um, anybody want to uh, give a quick guess then in terms of who made this um, vehicle, the, the main one in the shop here? Um, ah, we've got a correct answer. Well done, Antonius. Yes, this is... Believe it or not, um, obviously a couple of petrol heads in, in, in here. This is a BMW. Now it's not the kind of thing that most people associate BMW with, um, but it was how BMW made money in the in the 1950s, selling a, an Isetta, so under license an Italian bubble car. And look where they've gone to now. They've built that brand quite strongly. So yeah, um, vir virtual. Uh, what is it? Virtual bonus points to the people that got that guess uh, correctly in terms of it, or probably sad petrol heads like myself, I suppose. In terms of it. So yeah, how do we develop brands then? Let's look at a, a couple of other things for developing brands here. Um, first of all, what is the core defining advantage of, of the brand? You know, understand that um, for it, the, the, that, what do we have that we can utilize that defines the advantage of, of the brand. Look for any hidden assets, the heritage of it. Um, I, you know, BMW, I better add in terms of that, they had a heritage pre-1950s, pre the, pre the war of, of making some absolutely fantastic cars. And that's the heritage they used, not the, the building the bubble cars side of things. So they developed it. And actually there's another petrol heavy type thing Look at the way BMW have developed the heritage and assets of the mini brand very, very successfully. Building winning partnerships, partnering with, and, and that's 
you know, customers, dare I say influencers, probably not, I don't really want to, but you know what I mean. You know, building partnerships as a brand with any other organization that's appropriate. Using any synergies with partners, supplier partners, intermediary partners, anything on that basis. You know, if we're in B2B using intermediaries, work on that basis. But involve all of your stakeholders, in particular people inside the organization, because a brand is the people that there are in that organization. You know, a brand is delivered by people. It doesn't matter how fantastic we get all the other things. If you have a conversation with somebody and they don't reflect the brand, then that, well, they are the brand that you get. So that's so important. And so to kind of finish off and wrap up a little bit, and it is a very quick session in terms of this, and this is where we can really expand a lot more, but um, <clears throat> in terms of developing brands, define the message. What is it that we want the brand to say? And having that clear message, uh, not it, it's hard to get away from Nike in that, just do it. What a fantastic message that one is that we all just recognize so easily. Define the assets, the visuals, the verbal and the behavioral. Very easy to think about the brand as just being that visual. But how does it talk? And actually, I would say read an innocent packet. There's the verbal that goes along with it. The behavioral, have a look at images of inside um, Innocent's headquarters. And you'll see the behave, they behave the way they talk and the way they look. Um, so it all fits together in terms of that. Understand the touch points. Where are those touch points that customers are in contact with the brand? Where is it gonna be? Where will they see the visuals? Where will they hear the verbals? How will they experience that behavior? And use that to identify the moments of truth, the ones that really make the difference. And to make sure we've got absolutely the right bits of branding at the right place. But disrupt, use the experience to disrupt the sectors that we're in. Use that to, you know, just to, to disrupt people's thinking. Um, and that's, yes, there's an element of disruption marketing, but get people to think, oh, I didn't expect to see that. That's not what I was expecting. That's not the usual thing. So that disruption becomes really, really important. And I think I've probably just about reached time and hopefully not overrun. Um, so you know, anybody got any questions in terms of that? Very happy to answer them. Um, thanks for watching. In terms of it, the offer, which I should have put on here, what I'm, what I'm very happy to do, um, I mentioned this is part of a module um, or an extract from one of CIM's modules. I've got two hours worth of, of learning materials which I will say I'll get to you as soon as possible. They're in edit at the moment, <laughs> the video for that. Um, so if anybody wants that, to, to expanding on the stuff we've talked about here, just tick the box. And also, obviously, if you want to know anything about CIM qualifications, then um, please do, uh, do ask for that. Um, but get in touch. If you want to know more, I'm very, very happy to um, chat with anybody anytime about uh, about branding or marketing more generally so silly hat time again i think for, for answering any questions yeah let's um we we're, we're, we're one minute over but look i'm just going to come Sorry. quickly to that question and i think it's important to note at this point obviously i'm running the poll in the background so please do uh engage with that if you're interested in any of the stuff that andy's giving away but we want to give people actionable stuff that they can get on with you know in their marketing leading up to their 2021 plan so there was a question in the chat which you actually saw about you know what's the best way to assess your brand image right now so linking that in with what somebody can get on and do this afternoon mm -hmm. next week is it the brand because want? brand image is about customers you've got to ask customers potential customers what they think and and ideally with a third party asking because then people will be a bit more open in terms of it you know, and that's, that becomes so important to try and uh, try and do that, I think. Um, that, yeah, that's, that's my best suggestion is do a survey, phone them up, ask them. But if you can get somebody else to do it on your behalf, that's even better. Great. Thanks for watching the recording of this live keynote webinar. Did you know we've set up a YouTube channel where we've uploaded all of the other recordings for you to watch? Please just search for Marketing Showcase in YouTube and make sure you subscribe. See you soon, guys.